Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the long overdue video about my real views of the pros and cons of working in London. Moving to London has been my dream since 17, 18, even before I start to see the pictures from Pinterest board. Fast forward, now I have got a job in London and have been official Londoner for over three years and I wanted to share my honest, balanced view on the pros and cons of working in London as a corporate girly. This sounds so TikTok. Each pro will be followed with the con and I will conclude my personal view at the end of this video. So without further ado, let's get started. This could be the most obvious point, but I still want to make this the first point. Just as other big cities in the world, London offers unparalleled career opportunities because of its thriving sectors in tech, finance, and creative industries. London attracts world-leading companies, startups, and offers a variety of career paths across all professions at all levels. Because there are many companies, there are just more fish in a bigger pool. Whilst you can form your local community at a relatively smaller city in the UK, if you want to further extend your network or bring your career up a notch, I think London is the best choice in the UK. Despite of the amazing career opportunities, to be actually eligible to work in the UK can be a challenge. I'm speaking on behalf of the mass foreigners who are looking for a office job in the UK. If you're from a country who would require a skilled worker to be eligible to work in the UK, you would need to be sponsored by your employer. I've got my settlement status now, but before that, it is not easy to find a employer who is willing and able to sponsor you. This is particularly challenging during economic downtimes because there is simply no budget for headcounts. Sometimes a company would show on the list of eligible to provide you a visa. However, because of the business needs, the company would need to file a business case in order to hire you. <laughs> And in that business case, they need to demonstrate how competent you are compared to other candidates who are also applying for this role. London is an international friendly city. According to the 2021 census results, about 40% of London's total population were actually born outside of the UK. This figure is approximately 4% higher of that in New York. But what does that diversity mean? It translates to a city with a less dominant work culture and the environment will create a better embracement for different cultures and welcome more unique perspectives. Possibly due to the level of diversity, UK's visa policy for international workers is still more lenient compared with that in the US. For example, a close friend of mine was relocated to the UK because he did not get through the US lottery H-1B process. Although he has been spending a decade of his life there studying and working, and I don't think this is a rare case in the US. Coming back to the positive side, because of the culture diversity, it creates a food scene like no other. From Europe to Middle Eastern, American and Asian cuisine, you can almost find anything from the world here in London. London is an expensive city to live in. You probably have seen hundreds of TikTok videos about how much I spend in the day in London. From rent, food, sports, leisure, drinks, prices of every aspect of your life goes up a notch whilst you're living in London. So according to data, London's median salary for full-time employees in 2023 is £44,370. Assuming 4% of the pension contribution each month, this gives us a take-home salary around 2838 each month. The rent of a sharing a relatively good condition flat in the relatively good location of London close to transport links will be around 1,300 or 400 per month. So on top of that, as a working professional living in London, you will need to pay around 50 pounds for council tax per person per month, broadband slash Wi-Fi around 15, electricity about 50, 50 given the recent energy price rises, water 
bills about fifteen, heating bills about thirty, and it will surge during winter. Phone bills around thirteen, which is the plan I'm currently with EE. And public transport depends on how often and how far you go various places on a daily basis. This could easily lead to additional two hundred and fifty or three hundred pounds per month. And that brings us to one thousand six hundred per month. So now this takes up to around forty eight percent of our monthly take home salary, which leaves you around two hundred eighty seven pound for all the remaining activities like groceries, eating out, drinks, birthday parties, and so on and so forth. Barely any room for saving. There are many activities to choose. However, how to live a fun life without breaking your wallet will require some good level of budgeting. Now, before you roll your eyes and thinking London transport, really? Hear me out. London got this incredible network that literally connects you from anywhere to everywhere. We're talking about tube, bus, train, overground, and even bikes and walking paths. If you're looking to explore beyond the city of London, the National Rail would get you covered for your weekend getaways or business trips across the country. London's connection to the rest of the world is great, thanks to its six airports. Heathrow, Gatwick, and Stansted each has its dedicated express train to take you around, just under an hour from the city centre. This means you can land in the heart of the other city, just around four to five hours away, including the flight time. Now we come to it. So, despite the many means of transport, commute is still a relatively nightmare in London. It's very peak at peak times. Most of the times, the train during peak times is like this. From my experience, it is usually less busy on a Monday, but somehow very busy on a Thursday. Normally, it is like standing on the edge. After living here for around two to three years, I'm now even less shy asking people to move inside the train, or I can now casually swift my back off my shoulder and slide into the train to hit that one man spot in the tube during peak times. It is not too bad during winter because it's so much warmer in the train. However, during summer, let's say if it's twenty nine thirty degrees outside, it's definitely thirty three thirty. Four degrees inside the train. I know some of my colleagues do bring their chain shirts like in their backpack because they do get to sweat a lot during summer commute time. The working culture. So compared to Asia, in my opinion, the working culture in London or in the UK in general is slightly more laid back. There's a strong respect for personal arrangements such as holidays and doctor appointments, and employers actually encourage employees to properly take time off throughout the year. Even if you're taking time off during the bad times or the busy times, your choice is very much well respected, and it is actually politically incorrect for someone to give you a hard time about it. I think this respect for personal arrangements would contribute to a healthier work-life balance, and because of the good range of diversity that we mentioned earlier, there's also less pressure to conform to a mainstream culture. From my experience, employees are encouraged to bring their whole selves to work and to express their own views, which would encourage a variety of perspectives and approaches to problem solving, which would encourage the real diversity. At work, I might say this is more of a personal pet peeve than a con. However, I think some people would actually value this perspective that I'm going to talk about, and I think this is a pro. As someone who actually wishes to get to know the people that I'm working with on a daily basis, sometimes I feel the relationships in London quite transactional. From my observation, people tend to separate their work and life quite distinctively. This, for me, feels like some of the friendship that you formed at work is not very close. Because of the majority of my time is spent at work, I would love to get to know the people that I work with on a daily basis. 
And I do unrealistically wish my work colleague can become my work friends, especially as an international where my families are far, far away. This might vary depends on the industries that you're in, but I think the more competitive and demanding the job is, the less likely that you can have a genuine work friendship in the corporate. So as a young female professional working and living in London, I felt there's less discrimination during the recruiting process compared to some other countries in the world. In fact, there is relatively a good level of support throughout your career, such as the maternity leave policy, women community at work, and encouragement of women on the leadership board. The promotion of women's stance in the professional working environment would make me less stressed uh, when it comes to big events such as giving birth or getting married, etc. etc. There are still other parts of the world who would treat women unfairly. Sometimes the companies may ask very private questions such as when you're going to expect a baby in your family. <gasps> I'll end the discussion in a positive note here because there's no con following this pro and time for my personal viewing of working in London as a corporate girl. If we say the full score is five, I would say the convenience of working in central London is four, job opportunities of 4.3, salary versus living expenses, I'll give it a three, culture diversity for 4.2, and the level of recognition of women, I would say around 4.3. This actually gives an average of 4.5. This is me editing. I actually don't know how I get to 4.5 in this video, so let's stick to the result that is shown on the screen. So that is a 4.0 of my score of living and working in London. Overall, I think living in this iconic city is a experience of your lifetime. Whilst obviously various situations would impact your experience, I would still consider London one of the most memorable cities to live in for a good period of time. For me, I do still enjoy the city more than the cons that I've just mentioned. But who knows, my decision can change in the next few years. So there's really no downside to try. All I would say is whilst you're here, do enjoy the core and amazing memories that you're creating here. And we can think about the long-term plans in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.